Hello again and welcome to another video. Um, now I'd really like to talk about how to form the curriculum. So you are given stuff by the school to teach and it's pretty heavily dictated exactly what you have to teach. But the reality is you still have a fair bit of freedom to play with it and make it your own and that's what I want to talk about. Uh, there are four steps that I'm going to talk about to really make it your own. First is understanding the curriculum. As the, the overarching curriculum that's being taught, understanding the individual concepts that are being taught, gauging your child's interests and abilities, and then injecting your own passions and your own interests. These are ways that you can make the curriculum engaging and exciting and relevant to your kids. Now, this is probably going to be a four part series because my timetabling video is still processing over on my kitchen bench and this video is probably going to be longer, so I haven't even uploaded it yet to the time I'm going to be up to YouTube. And I'm scared, I think it's going to take forever. Uh, oh well, we'll see what happens. So yeah, this is probably going to be multi-part, so that YouTube can cope. Nope, YouTube did not cope. My computer did not cope. The timetabling video had to be completely redone in four separate parts. So this is definitely going to be a multi-stage series. Anyway, let's get back to talking about how to own the curriculum. Step one, understand the curriculum. When we talk about doing other things with your students and incorporating other things into the school room, something that's very common that I hear is we just don't have time for that. And that's true, we don't have time to do any extra stuff. So something I really want to focus on is not how to like do all this extra stuff in the school room, it's how to incorporate that extra stuff that you really want to do into the tasks that you have to do. So how to make those lessons that you have to do more meaningful and make them your own. It's really, really important if you are adapting the curriculum at all to talk to your classroom teacher. Make sure you're in communication with them and they know what you're doing and they're okay with that. And they'll be able to give you uh, good guidance over hey you could do it this way or you could do it that way or here's some different activities that you could try. So there's a few key spots to look in either your lesson books or on eTeach or wherever you are a few key things to look at to help you understand the curriculum. This is a Hass lesson book that we had last year and pro tip guys if they send them out loose leaf get them bound it will change your life having these bound. So the, the first thing to look at in each um, lesson is the lesson objectives. Now the lesson objectives tell you what the kids are learning in each lesson uh, and if you have a look at the evidence of learning you're looking at what the student really needs to know by the end of this lesson um, and yes yeah, that's a fairly obvious one be aware of students prior knowledge and experiences. These two are tell you what you're going to be teaching. If you are looking for some more information, the key terms here, these will give you um, sort of direction. So you, we know we're going to be looking at consumer, economics, and needs, resources, wants. So those, that, that, that's the direction that this lesson is taking. So if you take your lesson objectives, the evidence of learning, and the key terms, you know what's going to happen. Now it's really, really important to go through these terms with your students because this you, the use of these terms usually um, helps them on their assessment task. And if we look at a GTMJ from an assessment task, we can see that um, you know in the C, B and A level, they're expected to use discipline specific terms. So to get your kids up to this level, you really need to be teaching them those dis discipline specific terms. These key terms, really, really important. Now, if you need um, the definition of these terms, the glossary is where to go. The glossary is usually sheet one and you can find them here. This is also just really good practice for getting kids to look things up in alphabetical order. Um, you know, a little bit of a cross-curricular exercise. Um, and yeah, it's great for them to be able to find the definition themselves. That, that helps their learning. 
really understand the curriculum, what your kids are learning. It's well worth having a bit of a look at the Australian curriculum. You can see the URLs there, australiancurriculum.edu.au. Very easy to find. It's just a quick Google search will get it as well. So we were looking at HASS before. So if we go to Humanities and Social Science, and it was Year 5. So I can have a look at Year 5. Put Year 5 in here. Press Submit. I can scroll down and find what's the knowledge and understanding curriculum section. Uh, that was history, geography, civics and citizenship, and economics and business. So this is what that unit was about, economics and business. So I can read the Guide to Making Judgments or the GTMJ is also really going to help you in understanding what the unit is 